ran into Nick Diaz uh, purely coincidentally right after the Nate fight. We were staying at the same hotel. I got in the elevator, and there's Nick. Wow. So I've got about 20 seconds to visit with him before the elevator shoots up and it's my floor. And Nick was not making an excuse. I have to offer that because as I tell you what Nick said to me, it's going to sound like an excuse, but it wasn't. It was just two guys privately talking, and he made a comment. He said, look, I don't have any problem with the way my brother fought. Uh, I do have a problem with the fact that he took the fight. He said, my brother just needs time. He needs time to prepare. He had three years off uh, when he went in there fully prepared to take on former world champion Anthony Pettis. He had, you know, 40 days, 45 days, whatever it was, uh, to then refocus and prepare for this. I didn't, I, I didn't think he was fully prepared. I didn't like the date, and I don't think he should have taken the fight at this time. Um, and that was it. So then when I, being armed with that private conversation and then watching you speak to him, I felt that it was an extension. I yeah. felt that that's kind of what he was saying to you is, hey, you didn't really see who the best guy was. Now, right, wrong, or indifferent, have your opinion. I'm sharing what I believe Nick's opinion to be. Right, wrong, or indifferent, whatever the outcome was, I don't fully agree that that was my real brother in there. George was ready. George had a camp. He had Ben Askren. It was only a five-second fight. He was fighting. He went right back into uh, fresh. He went right back into camp. That's not what happened with us. And I want to see it again. I, and I thought it was cool. Do you think Nick ever fights again? What's your gut say? Yeah. Yeah, I think he does. In fact, I think he fights George Mosvell, and I wow. think he probably fights him in March. And I, I don't know about the Dallas Stadium, and I don't even know that that would be the best place for it. I think it should either be in California, it should be in Stockton, or it should be in Las Vegas. But, yeah, I think he's going to fight George. Recently, Daniel was on my show and he said he wants to fight one more time and he wants to fight against you and that's it. It's just one more time and he's done. I'm wondering if you, you saw those comments and if so, what did you think of them? Uh, I think I saw something about it, but I'm not worried about anything right now. I'm worried about I getting better. Uh, you know, and, you know, we'll see what happens from there, but I'm, I'm not worried about him right now. I'm just uh, worried about my eye getting healing up, getting better. And, uh, you know, and, uh, I saw you know, Tyson Fury's coming into the mix now here. Ah. So I, I, like a new, I like a new challenge. Oh. So. Did you see that footage? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah he's, 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 a, he's a combat fighter, so he's definitely going to have good striking. But, I mean, anyone can make a 30 minute high reel. I mean, he's still, you know, still good, but I, mean, I can do that too. Yeah, here it is. Actually, I think it was more like a minute as opposed to 30 minutes. Um, <laughs> yeah. What did you think? Do you think he's got something there? Do you think he's being serious about this? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I mean, you know, good for him. But uh, definitely, if you want to step in the action, I love it. I'll step in the ring. I love the boxing. Okay, really? I would love, I would love to box him. Why? Why would you love to box him? He's a great, he's a great fighter. You know, I, I love him. I mean, he's just, like, he's a good dude. I think, and I think we, uh, we put on a good show.
John Jones started going after it on Instagram. I was like, oh no. Let it be known. He started it. Yes. He started it. Why did he start it? I what, don't know. What do you think it was? I think it's I'm the freshman. I'm the guy that he wishes he was. And he's a fan. Trust me. He's a fan. He's, he's my biggest fan. And I think he sees himself, you know, like, man, I could have been that cool. You know, if I didn't fuck all this up. And he sees me like the new freshman getting all the shine, getting all the hype. But he's still the champ. He is. And he's still undefeated, but no really. One, no one really cares really about undefeated. his fights. He is. Oh, fuck that he's man. Hamill shit was bullshit. Nonsense. And the man, Hamill talking Nonsense. shit at him. Talking eh, shit at him. He was just trying. He was just trying to talk. <laughs> <You know what? laughs> he was just but, trying. Yeah. You know, I don't... I mean, Matt Hamill's probably broke. Yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, he hasn't fought in forever. Yeah. You know, well, I, mean, I get it. Yeah. He just wanted another... He's undefeated. He's a guy. Like I think yeah. when I first watched him fight... Because I was a fan. It was uh, UFC 94, Penn versus GSP2. And he fought Stefan Bonner. Bonner. Yeah. And just hit him with some stuff. Hit that, him with that spinning elbow. That hit him with that double up. overhook, mm -hmm. lateral drop. Oh, and I'm shit. just like, who the fuck's this guy? Yeah. You know? And, it, you know, the comparisons were always going to be there. Like with him and, oh, this is Silva with wrestling. Mm -hmm. And then when I came on the scene, oh, this is Jones with better striking. I'm like, hmm. I, and I said it uh, from the get-go. I will outgrow those those comparisons. I was like, I will, they're going to forget about this. So now they're not comparing us. They're saying, ooh, let's watch them fight. Yeah. I like the fight. I said, this is July. Um, after the, I think it was the MMA Awards, I was in my hotel room. And allegedly, I might have been stoned. But allegedly. I looked, allegedly, I was fucking stoned. And I was looking across and I could see Raider Stadium being built. And I was like, for whatever reason, just decided that's where it's gonna happen. It's such a fucking crazy fight. The way it's gonna happen, it's just boom. Let him go to heavyweight. I'll drag him back down. I'll drag him back down. And I said like 2021 is the time because I don't want to disrespect the game. I'm not gonna hold up the division. The division mm. be held up long enough by Robert fucking mm. being sick and being injured and you know Romero not making win and all this shit. I'm like, let me do what Silver did, which was honor the fucking code and actually be a champion mm. and defend the belt. So I'm gonna do that. I've done it once against Robert Whitaker double interim champ so I'm gonna do it again there's killers out there I even saw Cannoneer in the weekend and he's a fucking beautiful dude man such a nice guy he's a very said, nice what's guy what's up brother how you doing he's a killer you know? exactly he's, he's the in. dark horse he's the dark horse he of, is. everyone thinks Romero is everyone thinks Costa is the one nah he is the guy I'm like I'm stalking him I've been watching him man he's another guy that's made a shift mm. over the last year and a half or so Jared's made a shift mm. where he's just become more and more serious more and more dangerous and you watch him like, when he took out Anderson Silva and he fucked his leg up you're like mm. Jesus like yeah. he's on on a, he's a on, mission yeah. he's on a mission I see him man I'm not slipping they'll never <clears> catch <throat> me slipping unless I slip him and I rip him he's got fantastic genetics too and that yeah. guy's a tank see I saw when he was fighting this guy at heavyweight and he, he walked was heavyweight him down. yeah he walked him down with his hands down yeah <laughs>